What's up, guys? Okay, hear me out on this one. Hear me out on this one, guys. Part of growing and chasing greatness requires that you have inside of you this, this confidence, almost borderline arrogance, where you believe everything is possible and you believe it's possible in large part because of who you are inside. And so that takes a certain level of, of courage and drive and tenacity that comes across as arrogance. And if you're not careful, it can be very easy for that outwardly need to be positive and uh, confident to seep inside of you where you really be begin to believe that your crap don't stink, that you are above others, that your success is all about you and you forget how you got there. You forget who helped you get there. So what I want you guys to understand that if you are doing it the right way, if you are chasing greatness the right way, that means you're always in the arena of greatness. You're always around people, uh, environments, uh, situations that test you that bring out the best in you and oftentimes make you wonder if you can make it, if you will make it. That's how it is when you're chasing greatness. It's not all the time winning. It's not all the time being the best. It's not all the time achieving what you set out to do that day, that week, that month. It's about failure oftentimes. It's about getting up oftentimes. So if you're not doing that, you're not chasing greatness. I'm not sure what it is. You're chasing success. You're chasing achievement. You're enamored and seduced by, by accolades and, and, by, and by recognition. But you ain't chasing greatness if you don't feel that discomfort often. So when you're doing that, that by nature will humble you. Right? When I was chasing my, my dreams of playing football and I went from... from middle school to high school, right? I would, you know, my, my, my growth was tested. When I went from high school to college, my success was tested. My faith in the process was tested. When I went from, from wanting to be in finance and, and going to get my MBA, going to Santa Clara in a room full of people who went to, to great undergraduate programs who were smart, and, and oftentimes already successful in business, my drive, my passion, my confidence was tested. So in those environments, you get humbled and you kind of know your place in this world. You don't accept your place, but you know that I'm here, but there are people who are there. Yes, we know people are behind us and, and maybe if you frame it that way, not as good as us in football, in basketball, in our career, in chasing money, in our, in our, in our, whatever it is. There are people who are not as good as, as us, but if you're chasing greatness the right way, you know for damn sure there are people ahead of you and that humbles you. So that's a natural thing that happens when you chase greatness. But when you're not put in those situations, right? When you're not put in those situations where you have to be acknowledged or, or, or have to acknowledge that you are not the best yet, right? Going to a new football team, going to a new sales group, getting promoted to a new position and being among people who have been at that level for a long time, you know, going to a new neighborhood with, with your new house, you know, all these things where you're moving up and getting better, you reach a level where all of a sudden you were at the top of this bracket and now you're at the bottom of this bracket. So you naturally are placed in situations, opportunities, environments, groups that humble you. But if you don't do that, or you need ways to make sure you're humbled, I suggest this. I just left the Skin Institute trying to get my dry skin addressed. Uh, for those who know, I'm always glistening. <clears throat> part of my glisten, <clears throat> excuse me, part of my glisten is me wanting to be shiny to to avoid 
my dry skin being noticed. And so I've had it up my whole life. Um, and quite frankly, it's embarrassing. And so a lot of us have things like that that we are afraid to show the world. Maybe it's our belly. Maybe it's our dry skin. Maybe it's our acne. Maybe it's our stutter. Maybe it's our accent. Maybe it's the fact that we came from um, you know, a bad neighborhood or a family dynamic is not what, what you like. So something. So I suggest to make sure you're humble as you chase this dream, to make sure you, you give grace to others who have things that are not perfect, even though those areas, you might be great. I suggest you guys put yourself in uncomfortable situations where you aren't the best, where you aren't the most attractive, where you aren't the smartest, where you haven't achieved the most, where a part of you in this situation makes you feel different. And when you do that, it humbles you. And it gives you the fuel, the humble fuel, to allow you to face the next day, right? And when you combine that with real confidence, real courage, real vulnerability, the world is your oyster, as they say. The world will give to you whatever you ask. So. I just left, I'm going to practice now. I'll probably get re-glistened, uh, but it's, it's, it's good for me, you know, this brand of, of toughness I have, of, of always chasing greatness, it's good for me to be humbled and even embarrassed sometimes um, the same way it is for you. All right, guys, I love you. Talk to you soon.